Good morning, everyone. This is infrared, and I'm walking, so you don't have to. We're starting today's walk at the Bay Parkway stop on the F train. It's Monday, March 7th, 2022, just before noon on an unusually warm day. It's about 66 or 67 right now. And the forecast is that it will go up to 71 or 72 by about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. today. Uh, it, and then there's a forecast for rain just at sundown. So March 7th, and so far the number seven is proving to be lucky weather-wise. With an unseasonably warm day on a Monday, March 7th, coinciding with the first day that New York City has suspended its COVID re regulations for indoor mask wearing and proof of vaccination at indoor venues like restaurants and sports venues and theaters. So, where do we start on, on such an auspicious day? Well, at the cemetery, of course. This is Washington Cemetery. And I have never been inside this before. I've walked or run around the perimeter of it dozens of times. The first time I saw Washington Cemetery was on my first visit to Coney Island in the summer of 1969. And my family and I were taking the F train back from our first visit to Coney Island. My brother and I were riding in the front car, looking out the front window, which you could do then. And it, it was a very long front window because it was uh, an R40 car, which had uh, just been introduced into the subway system in 1966 or 67, 68. It had a very long slanted front door and a very long slanted front window. We were riding the front and as the train, Manhattan bound train approached the Bay Parkway station, which is where we just exited. My brother and I looked down and we were amazed at what this cemetery looked like from the elevated above. This was the most densely populated, if you will, cemetery we had ever seen. This is the first cemetery either he or I had ever seen in New York City And not that we had been to many cemeteries elsewhere, but our impression of them was that they were much more sparsely populated than this.
An interesting juxtaposition here. Just beyond where the cemetery ends, there's a billboard on the front of, well, it's the side of the building. A campaign poster for Curtis Sliwa for the New York City mayoral race that ended months ago. Okay. The Washington Cemetery also continues across the street. And let's see if we can enter there. As I said, I've been around the perimeter of this cemetery many times, but never been inside. Since we are ultimately walking south today, and I'm unsure about our ability to exit north of here, we've just turned around and we're getting a little different view here from inside Washington Cemetery. There we have the F train going to Coney Island in the distance.
This is the first of likely several or many yeshivas, yeshivot, uh, that we will see as we get closer to our intended destination. So I see we have a speed limit 15 mile per hour posted back there and a speed bump here. I do not see a speed camera. So we're approaching Avenue J. This part of Brooklyn is called Midwood. And uh, I think this fire truck passed us going the other direction. Up by Church Avenue, where the F train we got off of surfaces a few blocks south of that the numbered I'm sorry the lettered avenues begin like Avenue A, Avenue B and so on we're at Avenue J now we are going to walk all the way to Avenue Z which is as everyone knows 16 more letters but I think there are some non-lettered avenues in between, just named avenues. I don't know if they were just fit in between or they're inserted as an extra avenue. Anyway, we're now walking south on McDonald Avenue and that's the elevated for the F train. And the F this elevated will continue almost all the way to Coney Island over McDonald Avenue. Avenue J, by the way, if we were to walk east until East 16th Street, you would come across DeFaro Pizza, which is run by a now nearly 90-year-old founder and um, whose first name is Dominic. But it is definitely a stop uh, for those who are serious about their pizza and want to it is considered by many to be among the best pizza in New York and it's in Brooklyn
The closest stop to Defara's is Avenue J on the Q train. Now we could keep walking south to Co toward Coney Island under the F train. But let's take a slightly cacophonous route. Less cacophonous. Gas prices in Brooklyn, in the middle of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, well, I shouldn't say middle. I don't know when it will end. Change of course here. We are now walking, let's see, basically east on Bay Parkway. We just left McDonald Avenue and we are walking along the perimeter of Washington Cemetery and with I guess no point in trying to get a picture inside there this um, all natural greenery is obscuring our view Across the street is, I guess, the uh, storage and maintenance and world headquarters of careful bus service. I've seen those school buses operating around here. I'm not quite sure uh, about the derivation of the name careful bus service. Careful bus. Um, does it mean that the, the bus is being operated in a careful way, or is it like a warning to a pedestrian? Careful, bus. It's interesting. I've walk this perimeter many times but I must say this is the most litter strewn I've ever seen it
Okay, the landscape changes a little bit here. We have some what look like pretty small houses across the street. And then a very large one, which um, in this part of Brooklyn could well be f for a single family, a large single family. So we're at Bay Parkway and East 4th Street. Besides having lettered avenues, the intersecting streets around here are numbered in east or west. McDonald may be the dividing line between east and west, I'm not sure. Right. We want to go to Ocean Parkway. And this is Ocean Parkway. Ocean Parkway was created in the 1890s. I do remember sometime in the 1990s, the, these malls were marked with Parks Department signs celebrating the 100th anniversary. Maybe we'll see one. Despite the Parks Department's efficiency for the timely removal of such signs. So Ocean Parkway, this, you can see we're adjacent to the southbound traffic lanes. There's, um, there's a one lane service road on our right. And then the main north sound traveling lanes are to our left. So there are six lanes altogether in the main section. And uh, there's, there are malls, pedestrian and bike malls. This side, on the southbound side here, well, um, on this mall going all the way down to Coney Island, this iron railing separates the pedestrian and sitting area 
from the bicycle only area. Is there a universal compliance with this separation? I don't know, let's see. Get another look at Washington Cemetery. We're nearing the end of Washington Cemetery. Nearing, but not there yet. This particular stretch of Ocean Parkway is without intersections between Avenues J and Avenue L. We entered at Avenue J. There was a traffic light and we just crossed what would be Avenue K. But because of the cemetery, Avenue K stops just across Ocean Parkway. It ends where it begins depending on your point of view. Whoa. And the latest addition to the infrastructure here uh, on the street sign that says that is Avenue K is the digital Your Speed sign. I can't tell what it's reading or even if it's active. I believe the speed limit here is... It, it could be 30 miles an hour at most, or it could be the standard city speed limit of 25 miles an hour. The city, by the way, had to get the state legislature and the governor to approve uh, a change in the motor vehicle law that change the city speed limit in New York City from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. Oh, here's someone else walking on the bike path. Here's a runner about to enter the bike path. Anyway, this is the longest continuous stretch of Ocean Parkway where this path is not interrupted by an intersection. And here we have the end, the southern end of Washington Cemetery. And uh, F train in the distance heading to Coney Island. And because real estate is so precious here, we have a high rise residential building right next to the cemetery. Real estate, whether it's for the living or not, very precious and scarce. Yeshiva. We're going to cross over to the pedestrian only side of the mall, or I should say the pedestrian only mall. Well, 
it was quick. Right. So, unlike... Oh, it's faded, but unlike the mall on the other side of the main parkway here, the other side had bikes and pedestrians separated by a railing. This is for pedestrians only. There was a decal. There should be one at each intersection saying no bicycles. But still, you get occasional non-compliance. This part of Ocean Parkway is a mix of older, large apartment buildings, um, newer, large apartment buildings trying to look like older, large apartment buildings, and interspersed with single-family homes In some cases, two family homes, but in many cases, the homes started out when they were originally built with many fewer square feet, and they've been expanded over the years as the average size of the families in this area has increased. Um, I don't know if I that can be fact-checked. Anyway, I have to stop here. This caught my eye. Uh, this is a legacy traffic control. There are hardly any of them left in the city. This is, uh, I would call it a marbleite traffic control because uh, the particular shape and design of that box in uh, every other city where they were installed it had identical looking box but it just said marbleite uh, and in New York City they're all stamped at the factory New York City because that's a standard specification when the city goes out to contract for traffic control boxes. They have to be stamped, and that's one of the ways the city knows that the device is being built to the city's specifications. We're at Avenue M now. If we were to walk uh, about seven to 10 blocks east, which maybe we will on a different walk that covers Coney Island Avenue, we would pass a studio, a TV studio that started out actually at the beginning of the 20th century as one of the first motion picture studios in the country. It was the Vitagraph studio. It got expanded over the years when the movie business moved to LA. The studio in Midwood was eventually converted to a TV studio and expanded. Uh, and it was an NBC color television studio starting in the mid-50s, I think, because that's when color television started. And the maybe one of the most memorable productions that was taped there was the late 1950s, 
performance of Peter Pan starring Mary Martin and Cyril Richard as Captain Hook. And uh, it, it was broadcast maybe once a year for the next few years. And then I think it just was kept in storage and not broadcast again until 1989, maybe. So it was like off the air from 1959 to 1989. You do the subtraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we have some fairly similar looking two family homes with driveways with very well manicured and tended lawns. Also across the street. This looks residential as well. I think I have never seen this before. So this is a common manhole cover in the city DWS, Department of Water Supply. It's actually not a department anymore. I think it was at one time, like in the 70s, but it is now the Bureau of Water Supply in the Department of Environmental Protection, which operates the city's water and wastewater system, which provides drinking water to nine million people. All of New York City, plus about one million additional residents of upstate counties, certain upstate counties. Waiting across Avenue N. Okay, wait no longer. But to continue about the NBC studio, shifting forward um, almost 30 years from when Peter Pan was taped there, the Cosby Show was originally taped there. The early seasons of the Cosby Show were taped here in Brooklyn, in Midwood, at that NBC studio. The, in the later seasons, the production moved to the uh, to Astoria, to the Kaufman Astoria Studios, which we will walk to on another trip. Here's an example of a house that has been greatly expanded over the years. Across the road, Yeshiva of Brooklyn. Must mean the Yeshiva of Brooklyn. This 
a kind of discreet NYPD camera. <laughs> that was not very nice. that's been greatly expanded. <laughs> and columnized. And here we have a lot where I'm assuming there was a house, a smaller house. Um, and the owners have now decided to tear it down and maybe do something like the adjacent lot did. this kind of uh, cascading balcony appearance on this building. The Spanish tile roof appearance is pretty common around here. Well, finally, an unambiguous sign saying no bicycles. And yet, let's see. Avenue P. No jokes, please. And for those who may be wondering about the derivation of the name for the hit Broadway musical Avenue Q, Avenue Q, which I like to describe as an R-rated Sesame Street, featuring uh, singing humans and human puppeteers and puppets and, well, or anywhere in between. Anyway, a great show. Um, we're at Avenue P. So the next intersection should be Avenue Q.
so there is no indication on this sign that it's a New York City DOT sign. It may be that it was produced or purchased by the Parks Department or maybe some community activists put it up. Avenue P. The next street should be Avenue Q, but that sign said next turn is at Quentin Road. What? <laughs> that is a big house now. Those are special effects. So as we approach the next intersection, you can see the big street signs street name signs clearly saying this is Quentin Road alphabetically it falls in the right place where Avenue Q would have been uh huh okay so question is a scooter and uh, an electric scooter which that apparently is is it or should it be allowed on the pedestrian only side? I don't know why. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know why. It's not named Avenue Q and it's named Quentin Road. I don't know who Quentin is, was. Anyone know? Maybe that's why the producers chose the name Avenue Q for their musical. <clears throat> There's no real street named Avenue Q around here at least, so less chance of being sued. So between each of these intersections is what I would call a long block. Long block is equal to approximately three short blocks. Every short block is 1 20th of a mile, 0.05 miles, or approximately 250 feet. These blocks are about three times as long, almost 800 feet. So, at an average walking pace, each of these long blocks should take about three minutes. And there we have a speed camera. A speed camera uh, right outside a yeshiva or synagogue. 
or both. We're approaching the intersection of King's Highway, which cuts a diagonal. It, it basically goes east-west, but it started it kind of a northwest west northwest <laughs> all right one violator <laughs> Down there was, I don't know if it still is, it's a really good Middle Eastern takeout place. Now we're back to the Avenue lettering system, Avenue R. Again, just to uh, reinforce what I told you about that earlier traffic signal, uh, this is what all newly purchased traffic signal boxes have looked like for the last 20 years.
intersection of Avenue S and Ocean Parkway. Making our way down to Avenue Z and beyond. On Beyond Zebra. Catch the uh, greenery across the street there. Must be a branch of the public library. looks like kind of a classic uh, expansion except that steep driveway which I predict is causing or will cause flooding issues as that type of driveway does all across the city where it exists. When you have a narrow lot build up here we have um, a new upper floor being created
We're approaching Avenue U and uh, on the right as we approach the intersection is this structure which I've been curious about for decades but don't really know what it is for sure. I think it's related to the city's drinking water infrastructure. I don't know if it provides ventilation or or what, but I'm sure there's a way of looking it up if you're curious enough. Me, I'm minding my own business. Hello. That was totally unnecessary. I saw the Pennsylvania plate. He would have gotten a green arrow if he had just waited less than a minute. Two different approaches to expanding a house here. Actually, many more than two. By the way, because I was running for my life across Avenue U, I failed to mention that if one were to turn right at Avenue View and walk about five blocks, um, pass under the F train elevated, and you have Joe's of Avenue View, a fine Sicilian restaurant, um, well, restaurant, yeah, a combination restaurant cafeteria. Everything they serve is on display behind uh, a glass display case and is uh, being warmed or refrigerated as need be. Um, and then there are foods they make to order, like Pinelli. But it's Sicilian food, it's delicious. If you're ever in that neighborhood, go. We are at Avenue V. Wow. If you see the street sign in the distance, it says Gravesend Neck Road next. Uh, Gravesend Neck is... I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know where the piece of land called Gravesend Neck is. If uh, when you're riding the Q train, there is a station called Neck Road which is a shortening of Gravesend Neck Road. But that also seems like an unusual station name. I guess either way it would be unusual. Neck Road or Gravesend Neck Road.
Ocean Parkway takes, as Google Maps might say, a slight turn here. And that's why you have these guardrails at the intersection for northbound traffic that might not get it. And then they get it. when I get the topiary here. Well, in all my years here, I was never aware that there was a Lancaster Avenue. That was a truck from Atlantic Adult Daycare Center. <laughs> not too concerned about adults not needing their services. All right, this is a plain old red light camera. Not a speed camera. You can speed through the red light, just get one violation. A yeshiva.
Parkway Court, one block long. This bus, by the way, will take you to Allen B. Spumoni Gardens. One of the other stops on the Brooklyn Pizza Tour. A third one should be Totono's in Coney Island. We're not passing that today. We did that on another walk. This housing over here is unusual for this area. This street is Manhattan Court. Probably more related to proximity to Manhattan Beach than to the borough named Manhattan. block of houses built above garages. Now these much larger buildings looming here, Coney Island Hospital, which is a unit of the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, or Health and Hospitals, or H&H, &H, and it's uh, the city's public, ho part of the city's public hospital system. A big contrast between this latest addition here and one of the original hospital buildings, or the original hospital building. All right, something related to the natural gas system here. In Brooklyn, National Grid is the provider of natural gas. In 
Manhattan and Bronx at least is provided by Con Ed. So if you're a homeowner in Brooklyn, you get a bill from Con Ed for your electricity usually, and you get a bill from National Grid for your gas. I haven't heard that before. All right, let's check compliance. Nope. No. Oh well. Anyway, one of the original Coney Island Hospital buildings. I guess maybe the original. And one of the not original buildings. I'm actually sitting bus turnout here. I think the only one the entire length of Ocean Parkway and uh, the sidewalk just Hello. kind of ended here but there is a crosswalk here to a hospital entrance. So, 15 minutes, approximately, to reach the water, the Atlantic Ocean, Coney Island, the dividing line between Coney Island and Brighton Beach. Just appreciating this brand new sidewalk. And hopefully this is an indication of uh, landscaping to come. We'll wait. The bridge just across the intersection carries the Belt Parkway over Ocean Parkway. Uh, this is a replacement bridge. It was put in, I'm going to say, in the last 15 years. Oh, look. You Beautification by the all new Brain Eaters show. That's who I would want beautifying the highway. Anyway, this bridge replaced, I don't know if it was the original Belt Parkway Bridge, but uh, it needed replacement. 
let's see if we can get a view of the uh, underside of this bridge. Yeah, pretty good. So the older version was being supported between each of these girders with wooden beams. I wasn't quite sure. I shouldn't say supported because just between, in between each of the steel beams was a wooden beam. And I didn't know what the function of the wooden beams was. So that's the Belt Parkway. Late for lunch. Just kidding. This large school across the street is Lincoln High School, Abraham Lincoln High School. Neil Sadaka graduated from there. Who? By the way, did you notice we got kind of forced off the median there when we crossed under the Belt Parkway? Um, maybe I'll see the median behind these parked cars. It is grass only at this point. There's no sidewalk. The sidewalk does pick up again in a little bit. There's a speed camera. Here's the end of Abraham Lincoln High School. Just visually, not figuratively. All right, so the pedestrian friendly median begins again. and I think continues all the way down to the boardwalk.
No standing anytime, and yet. We are crossing, or we're approaching Ocean View Avenue. There's a Q train, a Manhattan bound Q train just arriving at the Ocean Parkway stop on the Q. And here's a Coney Island bound train uh, in arriving at the Ocean Parkway stop. Two more stops, and they'll be at Coney Island. Just wanna get the sign painted on the exterior wall I'm at the top of this building that says Belvedere Apartments. And then the businesses along here, medical mostly, also religious. We're approaching the Ocean Parkway station on the Q train. As we get closer, we can see the artwork that was recently installed on its exterior when this station was upgraded some years ago. This may be my first time seeing this artwork. <laughs> to paraphrase, I don't know much about art, but this strikes me as kind of racy for a subway station.
station work going on at the Ocean Parkway station. Someone who doesn't know that the bike path is on the other side of the highway. So, one last look at the Ocean Parkway station. Thank you for spending time here today. This is Infrared, and this is what you've been watching.